I got to thinking with everything going on with all the rumors and then Stuart Haas racing closing down. There's been a lot of talk that this could be potentially the most dramatic, silly season we've ever had, or at least in a really long time. I thought I would go through some of my silly season predictions and where I think some drivers will end up in 2025 for the Cup Series. Let's go through them right now. Hello everyone, my name is Kyle aka Racing Boy Short and this is my channel where I talk NASCAR, NASCAR news and everything NASCAR. If you haven't already, I would appreciate you subscribing to the channel. I do multiple NASCAR videos throughout the week. Also, give me your thoughts on this video. What do you think of the silly season? Where do you think some of these drivers might end up? Do you have any crazy predictions? Let me know in the comments. So if you've been paying attention at all to NASCAR and NASCAR silly season, these last couple of weeks have been pretty crazy. It started off with the bunch of rumors that Stuart Haas might merge with Front Row Motorsports. They might close down. Then you had the shock announcement of Michael McDowell moving over to Spire Motorsports. And then just a couple of days ago, Stuart Haas Racing made the announcement that they'll be closing down, seizing operations at year's end which leave four drivers looking for a new home. I thought it might be a little bit easier to first name the teams where I see absolutely zero changes in 2025. The big three I expect to stay the same. Hendrick Motorsports, Joe Gibbs Racing, and Penske. There's been questions with Joe Gibbs Racing that Martin Truex Jr. could potentially retire, but I just think he's just racing way too strong at the moment. I expect him to come back next year. With Hendrick Motorsports, there's always questions about Alex Bowman, but Bowman is under contract. Hendrick seems to really like him, and he's honestly been putting out some very consistent performances, even though he hasn't been able to get to victory lane. Then Penske have overall had a pretty tough season, and I think they're going to give Austin Sindrick one more year. He really impressed in the Xfinity Series, plus Tim Sindrick is part of the IndyCar Series program, so I think they're willing to give him a little bit extra leash even though, in my opinion, he probably shouldn't get another year. I think he will, though, get another year. Three other teams I don't expect to see any changes are Richard Childress Racing, which have been rumored to potentially go out and get a charter from Stuart Haas Racing. I just don't think that will happen. And another thing, a lot of talk has been about Austin Dillon maybe even retiring or leaving the team or getting off of the team. I like Austin Dillon, but his performance has been awful the last couple of years. And I, I just don't think he's worthy of that seat anymore, in my opinion. But I do expect him to come back and race the three car in 2025. JTG, I don't see any changes. Stenhouse is staying in the 47. It sounds like he's going to be under contract. It sounds like they're still working on completing that contract for the 47. And then Roush Fenway Kozlowski Racing, RFK. I think a lot of people have been hoping and thinking they might go out and grab a charter, but Brad Kozlowski said it himself on Twitter that he doesn't have enough money to put down to get a charter at the moment. So I expect it to stay a two-car operation with Brad Kozlowski and Chris Busher. And my last team I expect to have no changes is Legacy Motor Club. There has been rumors about them purchasing one of these charters. But I think they've been lagging back behind the other Toyota teams. I wouldn't say they're doing bad, but they're they're probably the worst. They are the worst Toyota team in the Cup Series at the moment, and I just don't think they're quite ready to expand to a third car at the moment. I would also like to say that Spire Motorsports is staying the same, other than the addition to Michael McDowell, as they have already announced that Corey LaJoy and Carson Hosevar are returning in 2025. Before I get to who I think is going to purchase those Stuart Haas charters, let's go over the teams. I don't expect to add any charters, but I expect some changes. Let's take a look at Rick Ware Racing. And the 51, I expect it to be Justin Haley next season. He's been extremely strong in that 51 machine, putting on great performances, He's even been up battling in the top 10 top 15 at points this season which I don't think anybody expected him to do this year he's been doing really well for RWR then another driver that's been doing really well for Rick Ware has been Kaz Grala has been a little bit behind Justin Haley 
but not by as much as you would think. The one problem I find with Kaz Grala, he doesn't really bring in any sponsorship. He's not a very popular driver. I'm a big fan of Grala. I think he's a very talented driver, especially on road courses. I think he can get the job done. Unfortunately, he doesn't really bring in any sponsorship. He's not as well known as a lot of these other drivers, unfortunately. So I expect him to lose that ride, even though in my opinion, he's kind of done what he's needed to do to earn that ride. I just expect with everything happen, happening over at Stuart Haas that he's going to actually lose that ride to Cole Custer. Cole Custer, who has raced some races for Rick Ware Racing before, will be out of a ride at the end of the season, it looks like, in the Xfinity Series, unless Ford is able to maybe finagle something when it comes to a race team in the Xfinity Series next season. So Cole Custer is looking for a ride. He's already raced at Rick Ware Racing before. He has very limited sponsorship to his name and i know rick is able to pay out of pocket to a certain degree so i expect the number 15 to be raced by cole custer in 2025 now right before we get to the charter talk let's talk about colleague racing colleague have really struggled since getting to the cup series not just with their performance but finding sponsorship and i think because of this reason we could expect another change next year as Daniel Hamrick does bring sponsorship to the table, I think there is a driver out there that potentially brings more money, more sponsorship to the table, and maybe even potentially a better performance. I'm interested to see if he can do it. My prediction driving the number 31 next year is actually Harrison Burton. In my opinion, Harrison Burton should probably go back to the Xfinity Series or the Truck Series because he's just not ready for the Cup Series. But at the same time, Dex Imaging plus other sponsors have really flipped the bill for Harrison Burton. He really performed well in the Xfinity Series for Joe Gibbs Racing. He's also the son of Jeff Burton. Me saying that, I also do think that Hemrick will stay with the team. I do expect him to go back down to the Xfinity Series full time and possibly share the 16 ride with AJ Allmendinger, Shane Van Gisbergen, and others just like this season. So I don't really see... Too many changes with the 16, but I expect Harry B to be driving the 31 next year. So with Harrison Burton out of the 21, who drives the 21 next year? And a lot of the rumors have been pointing at one guy, and it makes a lot of sense. We've seen a lot of performance out of the Wood Brothers 21 before Harrison Burton got in the car. It's essentially a fourth Penske car, probably the fourth best Penske car. But I know Ford really want to hang on to this driver, so I expect Chase Briscoe to be driving the number 21 for the Wood Brothers in 2025. Now on to the four charter purchases and who takes up those spots. Let's first look at Front Row Motorsports. I think they'll purchase two charters from Stuart Haas Racing, plus they need to fill that number 34 spot. So they're looking for three drivers. My prediction for the number 34 taking Michael McDowell's old seat. Looks like the 34 already has set sponsorship. And this driver kind of struggles a little bit with sponsorship, but has a lot of performance, a great short track racer, and I think he just needs some more time to develop, and that is Josh Berry. And I think he will also be joined by the legendary crew chief of Rodney Childress. Now let's look at the next front row entry. I think it could potentially be the number 36. This is a number they have used in the past, and I expect it to be Noah Gregson. Noah was a really difficult pick to make because I know there's a lot of teams going after him. And I could have potentially gotten this pick very wrong. He could end up at an RCR or at a crazy other location. Who knows where he could end up. But I think this is the most likely location for Noah Gregson. He'll be bringing all that sponsorship that he has with him. And then I'd say my big surprise as the fourth front row entry driving potentially the 35, another number they've used in the past, will be Riley Herbst. Riley has not been the best performing Xfinity Series driver. He has had moments. I do not think he's ready for the Cup Series, but he does have experience with Front Row Motorsports, plus he brings sponsorship to the table. And you have to keep in mind, if he stays in the Xfinity Series, he might not have any great options. So I think Front Row could potentially be a good option for him. He has performed very well for Front Row on the Super Speedways. These three drivers will be joining the number 38 of Todd Gilliland, and they'll have a whole new look team. Even if I get this wrong, 
they're going to have a whole new look team next year because they're going to have three new drivers on their lineup, potentially. So there's two charters remaining, and I think these two charters are going to very obvious locations. Let's start with Trackhouse. I expect Trackhouse to purchase one of these charters as they were rumored to pretty much have one of these charters locked up. And I expect it to probably be the number 91 and it to be raced by Zane Smith as Zane Smith is leaving Spire at the end of the season. And I expect him to go back to Trackhouse as he is under contract with Trackhouse Racing. I do say this, but I also think there is an outside shot that he could get into one of those colleague cars, but I couldn't quite pull the trigger on that. But I could also see it as a possibility of him going to colleague and then Shane getting in to the track house car. But we'll have to see what happens. This is my prediction, but I wouldn't be surprised if it goes the other way. Then my last prediction, I predict that 2311 will purchase the last charter. And I think this is a great pickup, potentially the best pickup in free agency. I think this kid has a bright future, could potentially even be a future champion of the sport. Who knows? He shows a lot of talent, and he's completely dominating the truck series right now, and that is Corey Heim. I expect Corey Heim to be driving the number 67 for 2311 racing next year. But that'll do it for my silly season predictions. I think I probably got a lot of these wrong, if not all of these wrong, but we'll have to see here in the next couple of months. I'll be keeping you guys updated on the news we get when it comes to NASCAR silly season. But let me know in the comments, what do you think of my predictions? What would your predictions be? Do you have any crazy predictions? Let me know down below in the comments. But that'll do it for me. Thanks for watching. My name is Kyle, aka Racing Boy Short, saying peace.